Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today we are going to review Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story. I thought to myself recently, does Mario and Luigi have a certified gold worthy entry? Only because Super Mario RPG and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door both have the certified gold perk which leaves one Mario RPG series without the perk, that being Mario and Luigi. Then I thought I would replay the best Mario and Luigi game being Bowser's Inside Story and with Brothership coming out, it may be the best time to revisit Partners in Time and Bowser's Inside Story. And I will be revisiting Partners in Time very soon. And just a brief recap, on what I thought about Superstar Saga. For people who did not watch my Superstar Saga review from one year ago, I had a blast with Superstar Saga, even if Fawful had little screen time in it. I still thought it was a fun game, even if it's not my favorite from the Game Boy Advance library. And now we're back, one year later, reviewing Bowser's Inside Story. Will it be a certified gold worthy entry to the Mario and Luigi series or will it fall into the collector perk just like Superstar Saga? You're about to find out. So, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? For the gameplay, the gameplay in Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story is unique from other Mario and Luigi games because it has a dual perspective where players can control both Mario and Luigi inside Bowser's body, which they can go to the overworld anytime with pipes, and Bowser himself can also be controlled in the overworld. I love how the puzzles are designed in this game, only because there are some elements in the overworld which can be completed by either Mario and Luigi or Bowser himself. I love the combat system in this game because it adds one extra character to your team being Bowser. While there are elements that feel familiar to Mario and Luigi players with the bros attacks, but there are elements that freshen up the gameplay a bit, such as the badge system, and while badges are nothing new in Mario RPGs, Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story probably has the best badge system in my opinion. The bros badge system is where you have two badges equipped and each combination has a different purpose, like refilling your HP or SP, increasing your attack power. Once your bros badge gauge is full, you can touch the screen on the DS to use the bros badge. This system does return in Dream Team, but Bowser's Inside Story does have the best badge system in Mario RPGs. But what really freshens things up a bit is Bowser's combat system and the rank system. Starting off with Bowser's combat system, Bowser plays out differently in battle compared to Mario and Luigi, since he has abilities of his own, like the standard punch, fire breath, inhale, where Bowser can inhale enemies for Mario and Luigi to attack, and Bowser even has his own special attacks just like Mario and Luigi with the bros attacks but the only difference with Bowser is his special attacks rely on the minions or Broggy Bonker which you can unlock after you've collected all of the blitties for broke. But where Bowser's combat system really stands out is when Bowser turns giant. I loved any part of the game where Bowser grows big, ignoring the minigame building up to it, 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 it's a pain. Because each giant Bowser fight is unique, such as fighting the Fawful Express and brawling Peach's Castle against black holes. The rank system does add an extra layer to the gameplay because the rank system can either add a new gear slot to either Mario, Luigi or Bowser, but can also allow you to access areas you can't because of your rank, such as some of the shops in Toad Town 
which aren't locked to Shine and Star ranks. While Dream Team and Paper Jam do expand on the rank system with some more ranks, neither ranking systems are that good because all they provide is rank up bonuses instead of locking away specific features behind different ranks. Especially since it takes away from what Bowser's Inside Story did by locking certain locations behind specific ranks. For the graphics, considering that Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story released in 2009 on the Nintendo DS, it looked really good for a Nintendo DS game. One of the biggest flaws of New Super Mario Bros, which released on the same platform, was the lack of character animations. But back to Bowser's Inside Story, there is loads of character animations that give the game life. And not just that, improves on the character animations from Superstar Saga as well since the hammer attack animations are much smoother in Bowser's Inside Story than in Superstar Saga. And one thing I really liked about Superstar Saga was the creative UI design within the menus. Since the menu would have a suitcase as the backdrop with a stopwatch representing the amount of time you've played the game and passports which represent Mario and Luigi and also has a save screen which uses an ink pen animation while saving. This stylistic choice within the UI was brought back in Partners in Time, but unfortunately, as one of my only flaws in Bowser's Inside Story, it sadly didn't get creative with the UI design this time, and it is the only thing I would change about the whole game if I was to change something about it. For the characters, while some characters in here don't need any introduction, because this is the third in the Mario and Luigi series after all, so we are only going to talk about three characters in this section. But I do want to talk about Bowser in particular, because he does play a big part in the game's world building. And I do like the way that Bowser is used within the game, adding an extra layer of puzzle design within the game and the action of the bros having an effect on, on Bowser himself does make the game more fun to play. But now we're going on to the characters themselves. Fawful, while previously appearing in Superstar Saga as the secondary villain behind Kagletta, he is a memorable character thanks to his personality and memorable quotes such as I have fury. And what makes Fawful the best Mario RPG villain is his development. It took not one but two games to develop Fawful as a character with no other Mario RPG villain having done that before. And Fawful also has genius boss design thanks to his unpredictable abilities which make the boss even more fun and challenging to fight. Midbus serves as Fawful's assistant who has comparisons to Bowser and towards the end of the game, ice abilities. Midbus is fought twice throughout the whole game. Once in Fawful's theatre, and the other where Midbus transforms into his ice form, giving him abilities like Bowser's, but with ice instead of fire. And finally, Broke Monsieur. I do not have a good French accent, so we're just going to call him Broke. Is where all the humour comes from. His French accent and dialogue provides so much comedic relief into the game, which does make him a more unique character within the Mario RPGs thanks to his more diverse dialogue style for the character. Broke does play an important role acting as a vendor for Bowser, where you can buy gear for Bowser and return Broke's blitties to get rewarded with a new special ability in return. And while the roster of new characters isn't as deep as Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, but the characters in Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story provide enough 
to still make this a fun game and an engaging experience. Now we are on to the last section before we conclude the video, being the story. The story in Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story does remind me of the cartoons where the main characters go inside the body of a different character. But with Bowser though, it's a little bit different. Since Mario and Luigi go inside the body of Bowser after being inhaled, leaving them trapped. The game has two sides of the story, Bowser with his arc against Fawful to take back his castle, while Mario and Luigi look for the cures to his disease, which inflates toads to enormous sizes. I find the story of Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story to be one of the strongest in the original Mario and Luigi trilogy, and the decision to have Bowser involved with the story adds more to Bowser as a character, not only showing his villainous side, but also shares his anti-hero side with his own goals to reclaim his castle from Fawful. The dual storyline is well executed, because Fawful stands out as a villain thanks to his dialogue, which makes him one of the most memorable villains within the Mario RPGs, which newer ones ignoring the remakes have failed with. And while we do follow the Stop the Bad Guy formula, which has been used multiple times throughout the Mario series, the unique premise and well-developed characters make Bowser's Inside Story stand out from the rest. Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story was almost there. It almost earned certified gold. The only thing holding it back was the lack of creativity in the UI design in comparison to Superstar Saga and Partners in Time. It is a brilliant game and by far the best in the series, but sadly, it didn't make it into the certified goal club by one point. Even as one of the best titles available on the Nintendo DS, as this is a well-executed Mario and Luigi game, even if it's not in the certified goal club, the collector perk is not a bad perk to hold. And overall, I give Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story a 9 out of 10. Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story is almost a masterpiece, but doesn't quite make it into the certified goal club as the combat system's well designed, the story's well written thanks to the best Mario RPG villain, the story keeps me engaged, and probably the best world building in a Mario and Luigi game, with the game taking Mario and Luigi inside Bowser's body. So Mario and Luigi may have not made it into the certified gold club with Super Mario RPG, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, and both of their remakes, but it's a game that deserves the title as the best in the Mario and Luigi series. So guys, what did you think of my review of Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story? I still haven't decided what my next review is going to be. Probably Astrobot later in the month, but I still have a lot I need to play. I've still not played or purchased Star Wars Outlaws. It might be a while until we get to Star Wars Outlaws. But with The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, Sonic X Shadow Generations, Mario and Luigi Brothership, and Assassin's Creed Shadows, my lineup is pretty stacked with what games I'm going to play in the next few months. I can confirm for now, I'm gonna start playing Partners in Time very soon. But once I've beaten Astrobot, I'm on to Partners in Time. And most likely Echoes of Wisdom simultaneously. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on, so you don't miss another video like this one in the future. And I will see you all in a future video. BB8, out. <laughs>